Howdy. All right, guys. Good luck, everybody. Go ahead and ready up, and let's get underway. We are underway for the final round tonight, first half. HL3 ready. And the cakes are ready. Two, one. Ooh. Yeah, Alex trying to lock Purple Hippo into a class lock duel. Hippo wisely declining. Cupcakes lose three right off the bat, losing a lot of their strength. Dude, soldier is going to lead HL3 there. scoring. HL3 does take first possession now. Spamming out dual requests there, but the entire oh. HL3 team goes down except for Larion Scout. And that's Al enough. Al Capoon had a beautiful uh, knockup and air shot on the far left. Took down P Hats, the uh, soldier for HL3 that had spawned. Oh, Coyote healing a spy there for a moment. Gotta be calling it now, he's healing the sniper instead, but we see HL3 almost getting wiped again. Mummy popping an Uber. Alex oh, running all the way around through the first spawn courtyard and getting a kill. Oh, Larry there. Scouts in the backfield causing some chaos. If they were able to get that, that no, if they were able to get a uh, more solid possession in the center, I could see that being useful, but they're not able to get close enough to those scouts to really bring about that cap power to bear. I think it might be more effective to use the ping train on some soldiers and demos uh, and be able to have both the firepower and the cap speed. Well, and, um... They also need to in order to run the scouts, they've got to make sure they keep the mini sentry under control. Yeah, definitely, because uh, scouts just can't deal with a mini. HL3 is running into the solid wall again and again, getting knocked down and knocked down. After that initial opening push they did, which was quite effective, they've been getting... Uh, not a lot of luck getting towards the center. 45 seconds for the cup and cake timer. And still running around out near the center, but as I said earlier, the mini century, given them grief, and the rest of the player base of the uh, cup and cakes definitely able to handle the scouts. Last second push here as the uh, cap gets close. HL3 spy on the point, others trying to jump in there. Let's see if it's going to be enough. They're arriving piecemeal, and they're picked off one at a time. Uh, uh, cup and cakes have a lot of nice presence there on the point. I need to hold it. They sure do. They, uh, after they manage to take it back 30 seconds in, they really lock it down. Yeah, they controlled the rest of the way. Three. 
scout and the sniper already both down for HL3. Mummy goes down, one of the medics gets dropped over there on Cup and Cakes, but one goes down on HL3 as well. Teams are approximately even on their charges, looks like HL3 with a slight advantage. Cup and Cakes do take both the point, however. And both of these charges, I believe, are Blitzkriegs. Oh, yeah, the medic goes two. down on HL3, dead in the dropped charge. HL3 is. I oh, know that's Cupping Kicks are running two snipers at the moment. Not unusual to see Mummy sniping and James Gold is sniping. Unusual to see that. Daryl Dime takes out Mummy and saps the gear. Now getting healed by the medic. Stab Zuki, backs up and takes some hot shots at Daryl Dime. Sorry, Daryl Dime is the spy, takes some pop shots at probably Coyote that would have Alright, the control point is being captured. In that three. one medic situation, it's a little more even here, but... Oh, what we see is Mummy, who is usually a medic, has accepted a sniper-locked class duel with Alex over on HL3. That is not clever to do in a match like this, sorry to say. Mummy is usually a medic and a caller for them. That hurts the team. Alex, of course, very good at sniper. Not a bad idea by her to do that, you just hope it was not inadvertent that Mummy agreed to that. James Gold, who's the second sniper, is often seen as heavy, but of course Zuki is heavy on that team, and you can only have one heavy this year. Yeah, well, I was thinking this is a place where we're seeing the one heavy restriction come into play. Got the cup and cakes again with one minute remaining on the clock. There's a stab by Daryl taking out Grizzoni on the point, gets a sap on the gun and disappears. Very chaotic here. Both teams being significantly down in players at various points. Cupcakes though, the edge is on the right side of it. Our control now. mission ends in 30 seconds. So I have seconds. Cupcakes playing just a little farther forward and therefore keeping HL3 away for a bit. Al Capoon coming in to try and defend with a Crockett, but HL3 is able to seize the point. 23 seconds left on the Cupcakes timer. So, two minutes there for uh, HL3 they need to hold. I'm really surprised that Cup of Cakes is maintaining the two sniper situation. Even if uh, Mummy's in a class like Duel, he can always just hit retry. Come back or James will switch up. Yeah, we'll have to see how it goes for him. It's curious to be sure. Cup of Cakes yeah, right now they're, back. They feel like they're, they're winning, so no need to do anything dramatic. Good call there by Grizzoni to warn Zuki about that spy. She turns around and takes him out before he gets the stab in. Got a last second party on the point here. Zuki's in there with two medics. 
They're going to hold on to it, and Cup and Cakes is going to get this point. And now you see the adjustment. James Gold has gone medic. Thanks, Doc. Indeed, he has, and that's uh, two points now, obviously, for Cup and Cakes. By the way, that also does end the duel, so... Yeah, it looks like uh, Mummy has switched off and is now playing a spy. Uh, nope, <laughs> he's changed back to snipers. Five, four, three, well, two, James Gold is not medic, one, which uh, gives Cup and Cake the typical expected level of heals. Yeah. I don't know how much uh, playtime James has the medic. He's certainly been enough uh, on the receiving end of it to know a little bit about what he's doing. Interesting to see how he does that spot. I'm sure he's going to say, I'm going to try to play Medic the way I want the guys healing me to play. Works amazingly when you do that, and uh, Cup and Cakes is up 8-4. to four. James has a full Uber, and he's sticking with Zuki, ready to use it when needed. Let's see if I can get on board with James going here. There he is. Probably about to pop it here. Got a, uh, oh, nope. Holds on tight. There it is. That's a good hold by James. Showing some of that steely nerve you need when you're playing Medic. Holds it just long enough to make it very useful. There's a spy. Most of HL3 does escape. Just the heavy goes down. See crit stickies coming in off the side, but who cares? Popping a crits on Wyo, but Wyo gets exploded as does who cares. And Cup and Cakes is retaining a hold on the center, though Larry is behind them causing some problems. He goes down. Sort of spy decloak, there's the spy. Spy saps the gun. That is a, uh, not the, that's a red tape recorder being used by the spy. That's actually interesting. pretty slow on a mini sentry, not the best choice in my yeah. opinion. Interesting, yeah. Nothing to be all. Though it could be a tactical decision as well, because so long as that mini is up, the engineer cannot destroy, cannot build a new one. That's true. So it, uh, the fact that it takes longer to destroy and disables the gun might be a deliberate choice, which would be pretty clever. I believe that is what we would typically think of as a face stab, though we've talked about that today. <laughs> yep. Cup and Cakes. Heavily controlled, two and a half minutes. Almost like the best of the point. For a minute there, I was having trouble, uh trouble finding where the uh, HL3 team was. It turns out they're not the frag. They were building. Come out with a crits on the demo. Get several players are down on Cup and Cakes. But in the end, it's still one, a one on five. Even after all those frags. HL3 is just coming out piecemeal and getting torn to pieces each time as uh, Cup and Cakes racks up their third cap of the half. They really need to move in as a large group and stay as a large group uh, so that they can break down the large group that's facing them. Right, they need support to capitalize on those successful pushes when they start. Five and a half left, obviously, uh, HL3 is not going to win the first half. However, points do matter. Every cap you get helps. Let me see, Daryl Dime getting a stab on Zuki to open it up before points even up. That's a quick fix in play from, or sorry, a vaccinator in play from Mummy. And a crits on Coyote. Somebody listening to the Soul Fan. 
Yeah. Control point has been contested. Ooh, there's a sniper kill of mummy. Crit scatter gun at close range will always do that. Fight at the south as the push comes in with the crits. Crits is out, but they managed to uh, get with it, so they already can't counter with his own. That was a, uh, a good little push there if they can get onto the point here. They are down players. Here, the big boom of the sniper rifles going off. James Gold back to sniping again. With Mummy and Coyote now as medics. It's a little bit more of a normal arrangement for the team, though obviously they weren't hurt too badly by their previous shenanigans. No, it seems to work out for them whatever they're doing. Cup and Cake's playing so aggressively, moving as a big unit and getting just up in the face of HL3. Uh, they took a lesson from what happened to them last time when they weren't being uh, aggressive as a group, and they found that same spirit to help them in week one. They are really controlling the flow of play here in week three. Five players down, including both medics from HL3, against the full complement. Now minus one on Cup and Cakes. Mission ends in 60 seconds. Shot by Alex at a up close on that engineer. Mission ends in 30 seconds. Alert. The control point has been contested. Seconds. Quiet in here, but I think it's because we basically been seeing about the same thing for about a good ten minutes here, which is steady control by Cup and Cakes of the middle. I agree, not a whole lot to say going on there. Cup and Cakes gets their fourth point of the first half. Two minutes left, so this is just glory play for the next uh, minute or two. Yeah, HL3 has taken the center a few times uh, towards the beginning of rounds and have held it for 30, 45 seconds, but after that, Cup and Cakes have come out and exerted some significant control that have moved forward and never let the line move far enough back for HL3 to have another chance. Yeah, I, mean, I think we're seeing a problem. HL3 is just really having problems dealing out enough damage to uh, push Cup and Cakes back. It's understandable as well. They're top five players. None of them are damage classes. Correct. That's what I, I was just thinking the same thing. If you, if you look at the scoreboard, you see it. Scout, Engineer, two Medics, and a Sniper are their top five, versus on the other side, a Medic, Heavy, Demo, Engineer, and Scout. Obviously nothing against support classes scoring big points. They're fantastic and very useful. But you do want to see at least a couple of your heavy hitters up there usually if you're going to uh, win a battle like this where territory matters. Correct. Uh, HL3 is just having problems getting into a favorable position in terms of the number of players left or in terms of just average uh, how much damage. Headshot by there. Alex drops an uber from Mummy. Nice snipe. That's Stranzuki by herself. She goes one-on-one -on -one against six members of HL3. To that. HL3 trying to move up their left side on the flat of the stairs. They're getting close, but they need to keep pushing forward. They can't yeah, hide. I mean, they, they need all, all their players to move up. 
They do. One or two. All right, group. folks, go ahead and switch Time colors now. On switch the first colors, half. and we'll take a five-minute halftime. Four to zero in favor of the Cup and Cakes. We'll come back in a second here. Obviously, as we were saying, uh, HL3 really needs to stick together as a group and move forward. They need to push when they have an advantage, and uh, anytime they're really going into combat, they need to be pushing as a group. Uh, when they stay back and just snipe from far, can't capture a point that way. Well, that and uh, th they're making it too easy for the one, two, three players that are leading the charge to get taken out. And then uh, with the head cut off, the charge is kind of basically dead at that point. They Agreed. need to be pushing five or six guys through. They do, and they can't stop when they see a casualties happen. It seems like when they do push as a group, which unfortunately we didn't see a whole lot of, the moment one or two people start taking fire, the entire team stops moving and backs up for cover. You know, best best defense is good offense sometimes. They really need to go forward and take out the people dealing with damage, not just die for cover. Looking at HL3, if they're going to keep this class composition, which always is a question, uh, looks like they've added at least one more combat class, another demo man coming in in place of their scout. Which, yep. The way things are going, I approve that change. I also agree with it. They need to uh, put out a little more damage and give themselves a more soften up the other team to push in. Build in the sentry. Not sure, I don't think I'm noticing any changes on uh, Cup and Cakes, other than they need to change their team name. So there's a player swap has occurred over on HL3. We see a Wapiti has come in and is playing a Pyro now. That's in place of their second demo man that they had a moment ago. Mm, I thought Wyo was in his demo last round. I think he just switched classes. Was he? Okay. He does, I he just does missed have 29 it. points, so he must have Oh, <laughs> good eye. Yes, of course. I just missed that. I guess he had a Pyro, though. That's a change. Right? I'm not sure if we'll see him stick with that, or if that's just perfect. Hard to say in the uh, downtime in between matches. Certainly, uh, we've seen some effective pyro play tonight, so it's not a bad idea to have one sometimes. Though perhaps not as effective as a demo given what they've been facing. Looks like we're close to getting ready to go here. We also see... Alex appears to have gone to Heavy from Sniper. k has switched from Heavy to Soldier. And Master Chef is now spying. Yeah, this is probably the biggest thing rounds I've seen if this holds. Yeah, it's, at least three or four different players have swapped up what they're doing here. This uh, is Master Chef going over to Sniper. This loadout might be a little more effective for them than what they had, which seems like it was just a little bit too lightweight to deal with the hurt that Cup and Cakes were bringing. 
first. And Cake, speaking of, have lost the first. Rega and dropped and is being replaced by Carpe coming in in the same position as a scout. Guys, good luck. Have fun. Let's get this one underway. Five, four, three. All right, everything's launched. We're ready to rock. So we are indeed seeing a heavily modified class loadout on HL3. They do not have that pyro, but they are running two demos, two soldiers, two medics, a heavy sniper, and an engineer. Much heavier weight. Class load up and we saw last time. We'll see if it helps yeah. out. If, if class is going to fix it for him, this is what I would have told him to do, Three, so let's see if it works out. Two, one. Coyote down. goes down, P hats is down, one medic down on both teams. Oh, HL3 just lost a ton of players there. They sure did. Mummy is at 86%. See if he's still using the vaccinator. He is not. He's using a normal metagun. Who cares now down? Both medics were dropped. For HL3 without being deployed their Ubers. Mummy's got 100% on his. Yeah, I think uh, everybody on HL3 died at some point there. That is a Kritzkrieg, in fact. It's a Kritzkrieg named Metagun that uh, Mummy is using. A little bit confusing. It certainly did its job, though. Oh, the bullets weren't cooled, so. <laughs> exactly. Keeping Wyo in check there with a bit of fire around the corner. Wyo gets Zuki a bit on fire, but with a medic that's not going to hurt too bad. Takes out the demo as well, and the sniper being forced to hide. Pushing the crits heavy, but countered with a... Sticky bones. Can't tell, was that countered with a crits or was it just random crit stickies? I believe that was random crit stickies. Yeah, that was random because Mummy just charged up. Coyote is deceased, so definitely. Well, we are seeing Wyo uh, on Pyro now. Not just a head fake there. We started him on demo, but brought him out as Pyro. Vicarus for HL3 on the center point. Trying to inspire the team to get out and join him. He goes down, but the rest of the team is coming to help out. If they stay there, they'll have it. And they do. HL3 takes possession, 128 left on the Cupcake squad. Control point being captured. Alright, the control point being captured. With the stickies there, clears up uh, several players in HL3. Only oh, two left. Cup and Cakes to cap back. Yeah, 8v2, Cup and Cakes advantage for a moment there. 8v1 now. Well, there's the respawn wave. Coyote is fully charged. Mummy is very close now at 80%. It's being deployed by Coyote with the Purple Hip Land Zuki getting some of the action. Realize they're getting a bit close, they pull back to uh, look at the team spawn, lay a nice sticky trap there. And that's good. Somehow Kakeris survived about four stickies at point blank range, but not with enough health to survive the follow up. 
who cares has his crits, and looks like they're gonna try to push out the left side with several players. Oh, so they're going up the ledge. They're running into a crits as well, it looked like. That's our quick fix mummy has now. Mummy ever rapidly changing weapons, changing metaguns, very hard to fix. In and of itself, not a bad tactic. Takes only a few seconds away from getting the point here to be the first point of the second half. Yeah, it's making a last ditch dive for it. Keep it alive for another second. Yeah, throwing the bodies on it, but not enough. No. Not enough. Not a little with enough coordination. Carpe makes first contact on the point, representing the uh, cup and cakes there. Or sorry, representing the uh, yeah, cup and cakes. Let's see. Serious frags each way, both teams fighting for the point, but it looks like the cup and cakes are going to come out on top. And they get the first cap of the point, first cap of the point to the cup and cakes. Trout now also going scout. He's over on HL3. HL3, we see there two medics are leading the team in points. See the team circling each other a little bit over on the flank. You see HL3 has moved up up on top of their ridge, trying to push into center. That's their heavy and both of their medics demo some serious uh, serious build up going on there as the team tries to put a push together to get back to the center point. Plinko's had to bow out uh, of the booth for a moment. However, of course, Flash is with us. Flash, our lead referee for the cup. Flash, thanks for joining us. No problem. Oh, nice shot by James Gold and the Snipes. Two good shots from James Gold and the Sniper takes out Daryl and Master Chef. And racks up Wyo while he's at it. One, two, three in a row. Big takedowns there. Really broke the back of that push that HL3 was trying to put together. Mission ends in 60 seconds. Takes out Larry, who tried to counter snipe him. And quick with the Jurati. Helps the whole team as well. Picking up some heals. And the medics healing snipers often get made fun of a little bit, but uh, when you're doing damage like James Gold just did, you deserve the heals. There he goes against Alex. Sorry, go ahead. I hate to see the little bit of frustration growing with HL3. Definitely they need to, uh, to start really paying attention, moving as a team, not just running out one or two at a time like we keep saying. They need to move out as a complete unit and uh, pick their target and pick their time. Because, as you said, the frustration can set in. It's very important to keep the team motivated. Three, two, one. Alright, our control point is being captured. 
Mary dancing on center, followed by Who Cares dancing on center, trying to keep it alive at the last second there. Alex moving in. Again, they're coming one at a time. It's the fourth person P-Hats now. One at a time, each one. If they were all there together, they might have been able to cap that. As it was, they bought a little bit of time. But it may not be enough. Both scouts now running in. Finally take out yeah, the key. The cupping cage is working really well with the team here. They really are. Even though they're only six of them up, they don't have a man advantage or anything. They're all in one place, so that in any given fight, they do have player advantage. I see a charge with a sword by Grizzoni taking out the uh, HL3 Heavy, and that looks like that may do it. That's going to give the uh, Cup and Cakes time for this cap, I think. We've still got over 10 minutes left in this match, so if HL3 can pull it together, they could still tie this thing up. They've got the time. They do have the time. They only need uh, seven minutes of play time to get two points. In a situation like this, one might almost want to let the round end so that they have more time to ensure they do get the uh, the second caps, but you never like to see anyone give up, so you can understand not doing so. There's the second point for the cup and cakes in this half. Exactly 10 minutes now coming up, so half of the half left. See the cup and cakes making their way out first. Almost reached the point of them backing up a little bit. Now moving forward. Stark goes down to some big Even, Three. Even the cakes roll out. And they're together as a unit. Agreed, they're showing up in one place as one team. And what I'm looking at the HL is three different teams showing up at three different entrances. Yeah, HL3 is really splitting himself up between those three exits from spawn. Oh, that was a timely bomb there. It was, and with the, the splitting up from spawn, I can understand it would work as a pincer movement if they could all arrive at one time in the same place, but because they're splitting up and then arriving at different times, they're getting picked off. And it's not only making the fight itself uneven, it's breaking up their spawn waves as well, uh, so that they're not all respawning at once, so it's a little less efficient for them trying to move to the front. The scoreboard discrepancy is also pretty large at this point. We can just cup and get some really just getting the kills. They sure are. Yeah, four players, 40 or higher, over on the Cup and Cakes, only one over 20 over on HL3 at the moment, though HL3 did have some staff changes that I believe may account for part of that. Well, I guess the uh, scoreboard reset. Yeah, we see uh, HL3 there forced to put up its sentry almost in a defensive measure at their spawn building. We see their demo man having to run away from an engineer using a short circuit there for a moment. Had to reload. And, ooh, uh, Horseless Head and Sourceman's Head Taker coming into play on another demo knight charge. Demo's really starting to have fun with those. He's being pretty effective. I saw Grizzoni do a charge earlier with a, uh, a sword, if I recall. cover so much ground so quickly, if uh, you can compensate for the loss of your other primary weapons, it can be pretty effective if it's unexpected. The crits on the uh, soldier there, Al Capoon manages to survive, gets a lucky crit to take out the medic, and then takes out the soldier by himself as well and survives. Nice bit of dueling there by Al Capoon. Purple Hippo again with the, uh, the head take.
mission ends in 30 seconds. This All point right. here is going to put the match away for a couple of takes. Sure is. They get this point. It's uh, it's going to ring the bell on this one. We'll know our standings. Though there'll still be enough time for another point to be determined, which of course matters in the long count for finals. And also a little bit of team pride and such like that. Always good to keep fighting as hard as you can all the way to end. Never want to give up for any reason. That's just the Bill spirit right there. That it is. Well, cakes get point number three. We've got uh, six minutes left. A little under when this one starts here. And the curtains come up on what should be the final match for actual points here on this one. HL3 is proposing a melee battle royale here in the middle, and it looks like the Cup and Cakes are taking them up on it. Looks like they are. Seeing some rocket kills coming in, interestingly from HL3 firing rockets. But uh, Cup and Cakes coming back with the with the melee attacks. There's that frustration you're talking about, a bit of a negative attitude there. Really got to try and keep that in check. That can hurt the whole team in the long run as well as the short run. Always keep your chin up, always keep on fighting. It's understandable to see. I mean, nobody wants to lose. You especially hate to see somebody get rolled. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's a build. This is supposed to be fun. It, it's a little competitive, but the main point here is to have fun. you got to keep it light. got to keep it light, but still, it's a 3-0 game. We've, we've seen some where it's 9, 10, 12 points being scored. This is not a bad match going on. Five-minute sections for a King of the Hill map is not atypical, but that's just me. I come from a, a belief that if you're not fighting hard playing for the win, you're not doing it right. The control point is being captured. But, of course... Game for fun, it's a game for fun. Takarpe bringing out his axe. Yeah, and Kaker is with the rocket He's got to get at least one axe kill every cup. <laughs> that is a fact. That, that right. goes back for probably all five TF2 cups that we've had. He's been a part of. And I uh, remember plenty of axe kills coming from him at various points. Here's HL3 coming back to take the point. Doing pretty well here in melee mode. A yeah, minute 58 on Cup and Cake's clock, 220 and counting on HL3. Saw Carpe got credit for a kill there, though it looked like it was a real kill. There's an axe kill for Carpe on there. And another one on Wyo. He's and a murdering axe, axe maniac. Carpe's axe ranked up to notably dangerous with that kill. <laughs> we have captured the control point. We're riding along with Carpe now. Watch the axe murderer in form. Oh, he takes a uh, Girati. Gets hit with a rocket before being slashed. Rockets obviously hurt a little bit when you're expecting melee fighting. Nice stun there against James Gold. Oh, beheading on the center point. Bob took out Trout. <laughs> oh, nice. Alright, the control point is being captured. Your order now. And here comes Trout again, carrying a signature fish. Let's see what he's about to do with that thing. Minute left, minute five on the Cup and Cakes spot. Minute 57 on HL3. HL3 takes the center. We've got 2.15 left in this match. There is time for this last cap. They hold on to it. There sure is. And despite the fact they're not playing seriously, this point could potentially matter. The Cup and Cakes uh, are 
in the chase. This, they'll have three wins. They uh, win the next couple, that would be seven. That's certainly enough to potentially get in the finals. And uh, points allowed, points earned, all of that does matter. So they have reason to actually be fighting for this. And that is Cup and Cakes taking it. One minute for their clock, a minute 20 overall. HL3 is on the point, and actually, if they take this, they have a good chance of uh, spoiling uh, Cup and Cakes. They took it. <laughs> yeah, they can spoil. They can't get the capture for their own, so it'll be a shutout. They can spoil that fourth cap for Cup and Cakes. And that's 20 seconds left on the clock for the Cup and Cakes. They need to take it right now if they want to get a fourth point. I don't think they're going to. And not enough time anymore to do it. Our control point is being captured. Alert! The control point is being captured. It's a reflected rocket in there. Causing a little carnage. And as the last 10 seconds run down, we're looking at a 3-0 uh, win in the second half for the Cup and Cakes over HL3. Cup and Cakes move to a 3-3 uh, three three record. HL3 drops to 0-6. That is it for this week, folks. See if we can get the uh, Captain Coyote from our winning team in here.